Second question, if you could choose two engineers to collaborate with, who would you choose? I am going to say Mo, the airport yes. guy. Love him. And um, I found out about this podcast because of him. Yes, <laughs> and he mentioned you when I asked him this same question as well. Hey guys, welcome back to another instant video. This video is a little bit different with our lovely guest, Jessica. So we're gonna be doing a rapid fire to get some quick insights into Jessica's fascinating world of aerospace engineering and beauty and pageantry and STEM advocacy. But do make sure that you watch her full interview where we delve deeper into her amazing and inspiring journey. Jessica, you ready for your rapid fire? I am ready. Okay, first question, which app do you use the most during the day? I would say it was a mix between Instagram and Strava. Okay. How it. millennial of me. I know. <laughs> Instagram doesn't surprise me because you mentioned it quite a bit in the full interview. Yeah. So um, yeah, Instagram as well for me and YouTube. I'd say YouTube is like as a yeah. slight edge, but I watch a lot of stuff on YouTube. Second question, if you could choose two engineers to collaborate with, who would you choose? I am going to say... No, the airport yes. guy. Love him. And um, I found out about this podcast because of him. Yes, and he <laughs> mentioned you when I asked him this same question as well. If you could choose two engineers to collaborate with, who would you choose? Jessica. She just like she's Miss England, Miss Europe. Oh, right. I feel okay. like that would be a cool like Top Gear type. Miss England. Yeah. And an engineer. That's amazing. I'm yeah, gonna she's look a engineer. Oh, awesome. Excellent. I feel like that would be a cool like Top Gear yeah. type. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, He's say. just a great guy. I yeah. have met him before. Yeah. He's a great guy. He makes great content. Uh, we've studied the same subject and. Yeah, he's just a really nice lad. So, awesome. yeah, definitely him. And then this person isn't an engineer. Right, that's They're a fine. physicist, is that allowed? That's fine, it's still STEM, we love okay. it. Okay, yeah. um, so somebody else that I met, um, Mark the science guy. So okay. I actually met him when I was at the European Space Agency's headquarters. They invited myself, him, cool. and some other creators oh, right. out to watch the Earthcare satellite launch. Oh, right. And we just hit it off. We got along like a house on fire, but he's very passionate about educating the next mm. generation in STEM. So, you have so that in common I well. think that would be a really cool collaboration, awesome. all three of us. Oh, but. I love that. Oh, you've given me inspiration. <laughs> okay, let's, we'll, we'll do something with that for sure. Mm -hmm. As an aerospace girly, mm -hmm. window seat or aisle seat? Oh, window seat. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Every day of the week. Yeah, I'd, <laughs> I'd, like, I'd, I'd question people who choose aisle seat for that answer, but, you know, fair enough <laughs> to them. Best piece of advice you've ever received? So this is from um, a person at the moment who is training to become an astronaut. Right. His name is John McFall. Okay. And he said, go the extra mile. Mm. And his journey, you'll have to do some research on him, mm. is so inspiring. He was in a motorcycle accident and right. became an amputee. He then reframed his mindset mm. with that um, that quote, go the mm. extra mile. And he became a Paralympian and he won a medal in the Paralympics. He then became a doctor, a surgeon, and is now training to become an astronaut. That is incredible. Go the I extra mile. I definitely will be looking up his story. That sounds yeah. amazing. Literally what a way to turn, you know, things around and really just not be limited by yeah. the situation that you um, he's, he's is been in. He is incredible, mm. so inspiring. And it just goes to show like we're all dealt different hands of cards and it's how you deal with that hand of cards, mm. which is going to shape your pathway. So That's amazing. And he's great. He's just such a great guy and I wish him all the success. Yeah. Go the so extra sounds mile. Sounds like an amazing human. Wow. <laughs> Right, when are you most productive? I am most productive when I don't have that much time left. <laughs> I can so relate to you. <laughs> Being yeah. completely honest yeah, with you. Yeah, I love that. If I know that I have 10 days yeah. to do something, in that last hour of the 10 days, yeah. I am so productive, nothing can distract me. I am fully focused mm. on the mission, mm. but I'm very kind of relaxed otherwise. It is too similar in that respect because <laughs> I need a bit of pressure as well. And I like, yeah, I'm most productive the closer to is it to the deadline. Yeah, or, yeah. Um, the expected turnaround there, that's awesome. Are you a beach holiday person or city break? Oh, I like a bit of a mix. Honestly, okay. I don't know whether this is answering the question, but yeah. I like an adventure holiday. Mm, okay. I like to experience 
culture right but i also like to be in nature and mm. i like to see architecture and that. just experience whatever there is on offer so i'm very lucky to have done things like hang gliding and skydiving and all those different kind of I things. I was going to say I'm adventurous <laughs> as well, but I'm not adventurous when it comes to things involving heights. So if it's like <laughs> seeing like a nice building, yeah, I'm, I'm down for it. Or walking lots, I'm down for it. But yeah, I, I think I need to challenge myself to doing some of the slightly more, um, you know, adrenaline, you know, activities. I'm um, not in a rush to skydive anytime yeah. soon. I've done that now. <laughs> We're good. Awesome. <laughs> so awesome. I love your, I love that answer. If you could make a documentary about a topic, what would it be and why? Oh gosh, I would make a documentary, definitely space themed, I think. Mm. I would like to educate people about things going on within industry that perhaps you don't get exposed to that much. So for instance, it could be the manufacture of spacesuits. Mm. You know, like how it's made, remember yeah. that program? I used to love that program. So oh, if you could yeah. talk about the ins and outs and the research yeah. that goes in to for instance, mm -hmm. design in a spacesuit mm -hmm. that integrates science and fashion design. I love that. What a nice way to inspire the yeah. next generation to show you can do more than one thing. You can be interested in the fashion design. Prada have just designed, mm -hmm. I think it's Axiom's new spacesuit. Oh, <laughs> so you can, yeah. So you can be interested in fashion mm. and you can in be interested in science. I love that. And maybe I think if there's a documentary gig al along these themes out there, we've got the right person yeah, here. Yeah, if you guys need a presenter yes. for that, you let me know. <laughs> um, if you could choose any historical figures to be your imaginary friend, who would you choose? Oh gosh, how many am I allowed to choose? Oh, just one. <laughs> just one. Oh gosh, this is quite hard. Um, maybe someone like Helen Sharman, first mm -hmm. British astronaut, who was a woman. Awesome. Really awesome. cool. Awesome. Um, but honestly, that's just the first one that's come to my yeah, head. Yeah, I could enough. choose so many different people, mm. sports figures, um, people who have inspired a lot of other people. I, yeah. I can't pick just one. <laughs> I know, it's really tough asking to just pick one, but yeah. um, no, I love that as well. I think Ellen Sharman is a great um, person and example. I would uh, love to meet her. Yeah, She would be sure. a cool one to meet. Definitely. What advice would you give to engineers just starting out in industry? I would say, take your time to mm. learn what your job is. Mm. I'm still very new in my job yeah. and be patient with yourself. Mm. Um, That's great advice. Definitely Patience, be patient yeah. with yourself yeah. and understand that we all learn things on different time scales. You might mm. understand something and grasp something so much quicker than anybody mm. else. For instance, in my industry, I might be slow at particular things, mm. but I'm quite good with presenting. Yes. So typically they would hold us back from presenting about our topic for quite a little while until we're ready to be exposed yeah. but they knew I had that background and that I was confident mm. so I was two months in when I was flown out to do my first international presentation um, on behalf of the company so that was something I was good at other yeah. things I'm a bit slower at yeah. and so I'm just kind to myself whilst mm. I'm new yeah. and I remind myself okay we have a different background to everybody here yeah. and we are good at different things some people are really good at that thing. I'm good at the presenting. I will get better at that other thing. Mm. Just how it might have taken them a little bit longer to get good at the presenting. I think that's excellent advice. I love that. <laughs> to the final question, who should I interview next? Oh gosh, mm. can you interview people internationally? Yes. Oh, okay. We so can make arrangements. <laughs> <laughs> I am very linked up with the international STEM community, especially out in the US. Oh, right. Okay. Um, if I was to recommend someone in the UK, I would definitely say John McFall. Okay. Because his story is incredible mm. and he has the STEM background, but also mm. the mission and the passion. And he's just so positive. He's yeah. a great guy. I saw him a few weeks ago. He's, he's so nice. Um, so someone in the UK, definitely him, yeah. if you can get hold of him. Yeah. Not sure how the European Space Agency would go about that, but yeah. <laughs> try for him. And then internationally, um, I know quite a few really influential girls in aerospace. Um, so the galactic girl, um, Camille, mm. she is- I think that name sounds familiar. She's yeah. a re really nice girl. Yeah. yeah, I actually had quite a fun night out with her in Las Vegas. So, <laughs> that sounds so, so cool. But she's great because she studied aerospace engineering. Mm. She has the same mission and she's been so successful 
with her journey. She does the content creation full time now. But yeah, there's a lot of other girls. Adastra Sue is another mm. one on Instagram for you to search as well. She's lovely. Awesome. Um, and these girls are all working with big companies or working for big companies mm. and they're documenting the, their STEM journey at the same time. So I love that. You've given me so many new ideas now, people <laughs> that we can bring on. So that's, that's just amazing. Three. That's there's just a lot three, more. Yeah, I, I've, I'm gutted I can't mention everybody. <laughs> it's fine. You, you can share them offline. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, Jessica. I'm sure you guys will agree. She's inspiring. And please don't just stop, you know, at this interview. Do follow her on socials. We're going to drop all of her links below. Make sure she's always sharing all of her interests, STEM advocacy work, and just the exciting life that she um, fosters um, on her social media pages. So make sure you follow and, yeah, stay plugged in. Thank, Thank you, you again, Jessica. Thank Great you. to have you again. <laughs>